Hello and welcome to our next topic. This servo motor. This is our next topic. This is how it looks like. Small, tiny servo motor. Servo motor, this is called the thing. Type SG90, it's written on there. Read it, SG90. That's our servo motor. It comes with different levers. There are different levers with it. I've mounted one where we can see. This servo motor can go from minus 90 to zero and plus 90 degree. And we can tell this little fella where to go to. First, I just want to explain what is a servo motor. Okay. Servo motor. Servo motor is nothing more than a motor. Yeah? Electrical drive, whatever. Yeah. However, the servo motor does measure its rotation. Yeah? That's inside there. It measures how many degree it did already rotate. Okay, and we can tell the servo motor somehow, yeah, how far it should turn. Yeah, then we can give it a set point. Yeah? And the electronics which is inside there, the electronics which is inside there, is constantly comparing the set point with the measurement and is trying to reach. So these two. needs to be the same. This is electronically controlled. Electronically controlled. Yeah. There are several motors out there with different sizes and different ways of how to get the set point to the motor depending on the complexity of this complexity of this electronics inside. There are servo motors which can be directly connected to to uh, field field uh, bus system, yeah, Prove bus or whatever, whatever field bus system, CAN bus and so on, servo motors. This little fella here is of course not that complicated. So this set point here comes. In a very easy way, let's say it's not too complicated. You see, we have got three three lines. Yeah, there's an orange one, a red one, and a brown one. The orange one is the set point. This is only valid for this servo motor, yeah? not for for others. Orange one is the set point. The red one is the power supply plus 5 volt we are using. Yeah. And the brown one is ground. Zero volt. Okay. How to get the set point in? This is a pulse width modulation signal. So we could say, hey, PWM, we know this. We just use the corresponding uh, good output from the Arduino and write analog write, and this is. It is not working that way. Unfortunately, it's not working that day, that way, because the PWM signal, our our PWM. And here we have time t is expecting looks like this yeah. zero volts some point in time okay this now looks exactly the same however here these are 20 milliseconds 
so this means we have 50 Hertz this means we have 50 Hertz yeah. 20 milliseconds means 50 Hertz our Arduino outputs are working with 500 or almost 1000 Hertz it's too much yeah. we cannot use our PVM signal of our Arduino we have to code it ourselves or we have to try to code it ourselves and now this duty cycle here the length of this gives gives the set point okay one millisecond oh uh, yeah one millisecond length means minus 90 degree or one end of the scale 1.5 milliseconds means zero degree and two milliseconds means 90 degree so you see two milliseconds is a tenth of this of this whole pvm cycle that the pulse width is really sensitive we really take we really have to take care that this this timing timing for set point is accurate okay this is how this little thing works so we will connect here plus, we will connect here minus, and we will connect here a PWM signal, yeah, which we have to code specially. So let's start with the hardware. This is the setup from last time. Okay, I will now modify it because I want to adjust the servo motor position with my encoder. Okay. This I want to do. Here's my servo motor. Yeah. Since it is a motor, yeah, I will again use my external power source. External power source should deliver enough power for my motor. Okay. I will remove the plus connection between the Arduino and the power source yeah, because the power should come from external. The only thing I'm leaving is the ground connection to have the same the same potential, uh, the same reference potential. Then I need in my servo, I found my my clamp, I will use it here. Should work last much better with this clamp. So red is plus five volts the middle one then we have of course ground that's the blue one and then we have the green one or the, the orange one the orange one which is pulse width modulation and I will connect this to my pin number five here okay so this is our hardware setup and I want the server that it turns if I turn here the knob of my of my encoder okay so let's try to program this now yeah? we said okay we need a duty cycle where well, we need a pwm cycle of 20 milliseconds so i will define this now now first i will define define my pin for pwm this is pin number five then i will define define my PWM cycle and this is 20,000 microseconds 20 milliseconds okay I'm still using the old program oh I have to save it under 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 different name it's meanwhile it's 32 yeah 32 and call it servo servo okay basically what this does was this what this did yeah, was to read in the encoder value then then the value there was the value stored it could be plus or minus okay what I want to do is that I that the read in encoder value is not between plus and minus it is between 1000 for one millisecond and 2000 for two milliseconds because my data sheet says 1000 milliseconds duty cycle 
is minus 90 degree, 2000 milliseconds duty cycle is plus 90 degree and 1500 is zero degree. So I should get 180 degree movement. Okay. So my initial value of my value is 1500 middle position. I want to have this in middle position. If I press the button, I also want to go to middle position again. Okay. I need to take care that the value is not increasing too much. So it's above, if it's above 2000, I will set it to 2000. Okay. And if it is below 1000, then I will set it to 1000. So it cannot get beyond 2000 and below 1000. Okay. Let's try this. Up to now, nothing much happened. I'll open the serial monitor, see if this is still working. Uh, no, why not? Because I have to power up. Okay, it's counting up, it's counting down, press the button, go back to 1500. Perfect. This is how we want to have it. Now, what comes next? Next, I have to take care about the pin. So I have to write pin mode and it's the pin WPM, PMWPM. And this is, of course, an output. Good. This one I have. If you forget this, it will do something. Yeah? If you have strange behavior, please check if you have defined the pin. Yeah? So, what do we have to do? We will write digital write and on this pin and we will set high value and then we will delay micros microseconds we will delay for some microseconds and these microseconds are stored in my variable value okay and now it comes a little bit a tricky part if you look then I set it to low because if you look we would right now delay and this PVM cycle minus value. Okay, this is what we think should be fine. Yeah, we have now something between 1000 and 2000 microseconds, it's high, and the rest of the time up to 20,000 milliseconds is low. Yeah, then we have exactly, exactly the wanted behavior like I showed, showed here, okay, just before, uh, it's not working, this thing is not working, this delay microseconds has some special thing, yeah, you can read it on the home page, maximum value is 16,383, so I cannot say 20,000, okay, Simply not working. This is why I will simply write. Now it looks a little bit stupid, but I will wait now for 15,000 and then I will wait the rest. Okay. Should be fine, I hope. Yeah. So let's 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 see what's the outcome. We'll see. Upload, open the serial monitor, of course, reading from encoder, something done. Ah, oh yeah, does not look too good. It's, I will make it bigger, I will make the camera bigger for you, that you can see the serial motor. We're now at 16,000, it's not moving very good. I press the button. Yeah, it's going back, 
But we are far, far from the 90 degree. Now let's move in the other direction. What happens there? Oh yeah. Doesn't look too good. There are still issues we need to find out why they are working that way and why it's not working. You have seen in the last video that it can be time consuming. I would go to 1000. Press the button. Ah, it's not 90 degree. It is not working perfect. Yeah. See? A ghost. I've just seen the ghost. It's not working perfect. The ghost in the machinery. This was the ghost in the machinery. <laughs> what to do? Of course, we can analyze. Yeah? We could maybe try here. Not 20,000, but 19,000. Because we think, yeah, maybe, you know, the program also needs some time. One millisecond. Maybe then... It's working better, let's try this and then see what is the outcome. Just to realize we're still not there. Okay. Guess what? We are not the first ones having trouble. So there is a library. There is a library. This library I will include. This library comes include now I've got it server.h and this library comes out of stock it's from Arduino okay this library I don't need this anymore I get rid of it the one thing I need to make a global variable or actually it's an object yeah I will call it drive, yeah, so that I can access this drive from every possible uh, subroutine. Then I will also not need to tell that this pin is an PVM, is an output. I will simply say drive and call the method attach. This just tells. This just tells the drive object that this is the pin where the servo motor is connected. Okay. And then I can also get rid of all this stuff. Yeah. I will simply have to write drive dot write yeah? and now a value in degree between 0 and 180. Okay. I will then make a delay. That is not too that is not too nervous. Okay. No. Between 0 and 180. So this means the value now, maximum value is 180. Should not get go beyond. And the minimum value is zero. Should not get be, should not get below. And the standard value, I want to have this on 90. Now let's see what's happening with the object, yeah? with the special designed object. Now I turn. You see, much smoother movement. We'll make it bigger for you. Make it bigger for you. We had 180 now. Now press the button. Indeed, it's around 90 degree. So this, and now move to the other. Ah, there we have some minor. So it seems like all the day have not fully, fully sorted this issue out. Zero. Looks good, right? Looks good. Much better, much easier approach. Why I'm showing you this, yeah, not only the easy approach. If there is a problem and you can be sure this issue has already been 
met by several other people. Yeah, one of these people are probably very good programmers, and they already solved it. And there is a library for it. Try to find a library if you're if you're fighting with an issue. Yeah, or you take the challenge and want to solve it. Yeah, it's also acceptable, of course. But you see, it's working much better. It's working much, much better with the library. That's it for the servo motor. What is your task? What is your task with the servo motor? Your task is to make this this uh, default position. If you press the button, this default position should be adjustable. Okay. If you press it long, it should be stored. If you press it short. You should drive to it. Yeah? Try this. It's not that easy. Yeah? Good. Yeah. Next time we'll talk about infrared remote controls. Remote control. Why not? Yeah? There is also an infrared remote control. There's an infrared sensor. We will talk about this and make it work. Okay. We can even use then remote controls from our TV set or whatever. Yeah. As you will see, this will, this will be fun yeah? to use some objects from the real world, not, which are not coming out of this box here. Yeah? A remote control which lies around in the living room since 20 years. Take it, send a command to your Arduino, it's reacting. Yeah? This will be our next topic. For this time, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.